obtained a, a gunshot wound across the uh, anterior aspect of the uh, elbow, the cubital area, uh, in February of this year, so it's two months down the line. Uh, of importance, is he has intact pulses, but he has an obvious high median nerve deficit with thinner wasting and the classic benediction sign, make a fist. Okay, so in many centers of the world, they would explore this median nerve because it's a penetrating injury, um, a combination of the fact that we've got too much work to explore everybody, but also based on the fact that if you go in there and you find a contused nerve or a partially injured nerve, you don't really know what to do. So in our hands, the best plan is to see what uh, outcome we get, and it's about 80% of patients will recover. As it turns out, this patient's tunnel at two months is already down to there. So he's got an advancing tunnel implying recovery of the axons in a prograde manner. So uh, we, we tend to watch all gunshots expectantly um, and then uh, manage them accordingly down the line, so either with nerve grafts or neurolysis or whatever. In terms of reconstructing the sand, if he gets, uh, if he, if he gets no recovery, hypothetically, um, the treatment will still be to try and graft the median nerve to get protective sensation because obviously that's critical in sensation for the hand. If it's non-reconstructable, if the gap's too big, there's too much bed damage, there are nerve transfers to be done where you can take the radial sensory nerve and attach it to the median nerve. What we'll do then is we'll find the median nerve, take off the nerve to the third web space because that's a non-critical uh, um, sensory area. Take, the, take off the motor branch as well and then take the radial sensory nerve and put it in there. The, the plus of that is that you've got radial sided sensation for radial sided sensation. The difficulty is that in the cortex they'll have to try and work, switch over from dorsal uh, sensation to palmar sensation. Um, the nerve surgeons in the US, um, mostly led by McKinnon, Say, says never touch the radial sensory nerve because it gives you, you can get painful neuromas, so she stays away from that. And she takes the ulnar nerve, she takes the, the uh, nerve to the fourth web space, which she says is non-important, non that's the important ulnar nerve sense, protective sensation. And she'll take the, the fourth web space and put it onto the uh, rest of the median nerve after taking off the third web space. Uh, the third web space nerve is easy to find because if you go down to the median nerve there, and gently push down with your forceps, you'll, you'll see a natural cleavage plane in the median nerves. There's often a vessel there, and that's the nerve to the third web space. It's already forming a group fascicle. You can take it off, you can take off the motor branch, and then you can put this fourth web space to try and recreate sensation to the uh, uh, thumb and index finger, and maybe a little bit to the uh, uh, radial side of the middle finger. However, it is difficult for the brain to switch from ulna to radial sensation, and uh, it maybe gives you protective sensation. From a motor re uh, uh, reconstruction point of view, make a fist. What this guy needs, he needs flexion of his index finger and needs flexion of his thumb. That's it. It's a very easy one to reconstruct. So from the uh, long flexors, all you do is you go in here, in the volar uh, uh, ulnar aspect of the forearm, and you basically buddy up the FDP. So you suture them side to side. You pull the index one in, make a fist. You pull this one in until it joins the cascade of the hand and you actually over tension it. Normally the cascade is shaped that way, the natural cascade. You, you, you reverse cascade it like that because it's going to want to stretch out. And you just do three uh, horizontal mattress sutures uh, through the FTP tendons and join them together. So you buddy FTP, so that brings the index finger in. And then for the thumb, uh, the best option is brachioradialis. This is how we test brachioradialis. It's uh, resisted elbow flexion in neutral. So pu pull up against me. There you can see breaker right here is a nice strong muscle. Detach it from here through the same basic incision over here. You can take breaker radialis and attach it to FPL, and it gives you a pretty good uh, uh, a post with a little bit of flexion to which they can then oppose. So that gives you uh, grasp and uh, an FPL, which is lateral key pinch. You obviously still don't have uh, opposition, so at some stage you might want to then consider an opposition tendon transfer. And the one we tend to use mostly here, you, could, you, you can't use the FDSs because they're non-functional, so you'd have to use the ERP. So the ex extensor indicus proprius, which comes off on the ulnar side of the EDC. You then make an incision there, harvest it, make another incision there to mobilize it, make a fourth incision over the uh, pisiform to bring it around the ulnar border of the hand, all the way across subcutaneously into the uh, APB. Um, and then one slip goes over the top to to create a pronation moment as well. Um, in this particular case, he doesn't have very strong FPL. So if you go around the EPL, you're gonna, he's gonna end up 
going to hyperextension. So you want to go uh, underneath the uh, extensor mechanism, uh, otherwise you're going to end up with a um, too much extension. Um, and you can also put it slightly to distal, over, distal to the MP joint to create some MP flexion as well. Um, but it's important to go all the way to the other side of the thumb MP joint to create this pronation moment. Um, so that's what we will do with this patient. First stage is to get the flexion and the, uh, and the FBL. And then at a later stage, if you need these opposition, then, um, then you can do an opposition transfer.